Good morning, Senator, on your Senate Bill 252. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, members, this Bill uh, 252 has certainly been uh, one of the bills that has brought a lot of conversation um, over the last six weeks uh, since I filed the bill. And it's interesting, I didn't plan it this way, but it's interesting that today is Survivor Advocacy Day. And I am bringing this bill for multiple reasons. First of all, as the chair of Select Committee on Women and Children and hearing so many testimonies of in, uh, individuals who have become victims and oftentimes it happening at a very early age um, when you hear a young person tell you that they can remember when they were five and being abused, that, that to me is absolutely horrific and no child should ever have to experience that at any level. Oftentimes that behavior or that incident that happens to them leads to other behaviors that we begin to see either in school or with other things that begins to happen in their lives. Some things out of their control. What became very interesting to me <clears throat> is that many of the people that I thought would be in favor of the bill had some issues as well. And so I decided that I would kind of take a little bit further look at it. And then when I got the fiscal note, that concerned me even a little bit more so in terms of the increase that they say this would cost. But let me tell you something. The impact to a child's life when they have been victimized by an adult, there is no cost that can substantiate what they have experienced. And then what adds further injury to that oftentimes is that they are held to be silent. And so they have to walk and live with this thing in silence that begins to have unintended consequences because it comes out in some other form. I, I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted, honestly. You know, Senator Carter and I had a little brief conversation, and although it might have been a little bit in, in, in joking, I am a proponent of life. And he talked about, well, what if you found out somebody, you know, they get exonerated later, and, and you have, the judge has decided to castrate them because of a charge. I said, well, they'll just be something missing. But then on, on the serious side, that would be hard to deal with if someone was convicted wrongly. For those individuals who were concerned about this only pertaining to males, it does not only pertain to males because there is a way that women can be impacted as well. And I was attempting to delve into all of that to make sure that that, that would be at that would be amended into this bill. Again, <clears throat> it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to actually have to pull the bill back though because too many kids, too many young people, and, and I, I struggle with an age that I thought would be a significant age. Um, but again, it, it's not just happening to girls. It's happening to our little boys too. And oftentimes when it happens to boys, it's worse. Because they are told that they're supposed to man up even when they're a little boy. And not say anything. This is a part of being a man. This is man, this is a part of being manhood, their manhood. And then it impacts them. And so I am gonna pull the back, pull it back. Um the last thing I want to say is that I have found, and, and I'm going to turn mine into a study as well, because I'd like to see what this fiscal cost will look like, uh, this fiscal note will look like. Most people who actually victimize other people were actually victims at some point themselves. And I feel that even though some folks say, well, this is really about power. It's, you know, it's about power and control. It's not really about sex. It's about the power and control, and I, I agree with that to some degree, but the other part of that is you can't hurt anybody else that way. That has a long-lasting impact, and oftentimes most people never get beyond it. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to take any questions. 
uh, at this time. If there's anybody who would like to speak in favor, I would love to see if we have any um, survivors who would like to share their story or the importance of that. Sure, Senator Barry. Let me, um, we have a few questions, and, and before we, we go there, just real quick, you know, you, you're limiting the bill to uh, people who have molested people under the age of 13. I just yes. can't imagine how anyone can do that myself. Um, it's just awful. Well, it, it is. And, Mr. Chairman, when you hear some of these stories, when you hear, when you hear an adult talk about they can remember when um, someone violated them and they were five or they were four and then it, it happened repeatedly for years it's unimaginable some and most of the time it's with family members unfortunately you're right uh senator ward for some questions <clears throat> thank you mr chairman um chairman barrow i i don't know who you know who would who's in opposition and all those sorts of things i I think what does concern me a lot of times um, we're talked into pulling bills back, uh, and in particular in this committee, um, I just feel like we've we've started moving in in the direction where maybe the potential defendant is almost being protected more than in this case the victim, and in this case the victim that's 13 years old or less. I mean you're you felt compelled to pull the bill back before we even had the conversation and i appreciate uh i appreciate your perspective on that but um uh, this is this is a severe thing i mean it, it impacts someone's life forever yeah um so you know i know that's that's the decision that you've made and i i respect that but uh, I do think going forward, it's a conversation worth having. Uh, not that it it changes the the life of the victim that they've already impacted, but at least it prevents them from impacting any more lives going forward. So I do think it's a, a healthy discussion for us to have to try and figure out how we deal with this going forward. You know, the the fiscal note doesn't. Uh, and my math may be wrong, but I was looking. Um, doesn't say dual referral, and I I just tried to come up with the biggest number I could. And it, um, it, the last paragraph, uh, for informational purposes only, uh, DPS yeah DPS reports there are 1,937 offenders in custody that have been convicted of a sex offense where the victim is under the age of 13. So if I just took that top line number and multiplied it by the highest number of 2,000 um, for chemical castration per month, um, it'd be, a, I guess, 3.8 million per month. Well, I doubt very seriously that all 1,900 of those people would qualify under this. It would probably be something much, much, much less um, I think it says to date there have only been 37 offenders who have been recommended for chemical castration. So you'd probably be more along the lines of that 37 number, not the 1900 number. So I do appreciate your thought process in this, and uh, I know you're inclined to turn it into a study resolution. And I, I just hope that going forward we continue to to con to to weigh the victim of all these things um, at the very least just as heavily as we do um, I just feel like we've things have shifted to where the the entire topic of of everything that comes from that table is the defendant and I get it, we've got a long ways to go on that, but we certainly can't lose sight of the victim and how their ha their life is traumatized, in particular with crimes like this, where their life is affected forever. And so I think it's uh, an appropriate discussion to have, and I appreciate you having the courage to bring this because it's not an easy bill to deal with. Thank you for those comments. And as I stated early on, I, I was really conflicted on actually pulling the bill back. But when I had people who 
um, are normally proponents of such action say that they felt that maybe the bill went too far, they had many concerns, which we never were able to really fully address. Um, I thought that it, it may really consider me taking a, a, a deeper dive uh, because I am a defender and I don't want nobody to make any, any, have any qualms, any uh, guess, or if you have any questions about this, I am a defender of children. Because they have no one to defend them. And oftentimes, some of the testimonies that we heard in that committee were horrific at best. They were horrible. And then some of these young girls, because they were made to feel, and I, I'm saying the girls because these are the testimonies that we heard. Because this action happened to them, they felt less than. So then they were beginning to be taken advantage of by other perpetrators who came into their lives and then they became a part of human trafficking or uh, a prostitute or whatever the situation may have become because they felt less than because someone had made them feel bad about their body and had taken advantage of them. That to me is inexcusable, it's unacceptable and Again, I am going to be a defender of children. I will step back this year uh, and, and let it become a study resolution. But you guys can rest assured that I will be coming back next year with something where I, I've taken everybody's thoughts into consideration. But at the end of the day, if it's not defending the children, then we, we, we would be on opposite sides with whomever that may be. Not you. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Ward. Senator Mizell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thank you. Uh, you and I heard a lot of those conversations yes. together. And uh, I think I, I was with you on this. I, I know you were. <laughs> because um, it's shocking to read it only if you haven't heard from the victims. Yeah. And when you've heard from the victims, this is not such a bad idea. So I, 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 I want to thank you for bringing the conversation up because you are an advocate in every sense of the word, and I appreciate you. And, I, you know, I, I, I think this conversation, if, you're, if people who've heard the victims are not speaking up, yeah, nobody's going to speak up. That's right. So I, I, I really appreciate it, and, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Uh, but you talk about... We talk about deterrence all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's a deterrent. It's a deterrent. So I, I appreciate it. Th thank you, well, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Madam uh, uh, Pro Tem. And you certainly have been my, one of my strongest advocates. I feel like we've become like two peas in a pot. Peas in a pot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Senator Mizell. Senator White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think this, if you're going to pull it back, you probably got that bill out of this committee. Okay? Just so you know. I think you owe it to yourself to go to the AG's sex crime unit like I have and watch the videos they have mm -hmm. of actually raping not little 16, 15 year old girls that are trafficking. I'm talking about four, five, three year old babies. Watch them rape one of those. See how you feel about this. I think people that are against your bill should have to look at that. It's the most repulsive thing I ever watched in my life. I went to a garbage can and threw up. Mm. There are people I know it's a chair. I know. I'm done. Thanks, Senator White. I know. Senator Barra, there, um, there was one email uh, in support, and we'll include that in part of the record. There are some red cards that I'll, I'll read in, and um, we'll give them, even though you are going to defer it today, I'll give them an opportunity to say something briefly unless they'd like to waive. Um, I'd Mor like to hear from them. Very well. Morgan LaMondre is here in opposition and would like to speak. Uh, would you still like to speak, Ms. LaMondre? Come on up to the table. Um, Chico Yancey is in opposition and would like to speak. Uh, Mr. Yancey, have you made it back over here? Do, do not see him. Will Harrell is in opposition, does not wish to speak. Darlene Jones is in opposition, does not wish to speak. Ronald Marshall is in opposition and does not wish to speak. Steve Tu is in opposition, does not wish to speak. Michael Cahoon is in opposition, does not wish to speak. And Remy Storns is here for information only. 
Very well. Ms. LaMondre, if you can introduce yourself, please. Yes. Morgan LaMondre with STAR. And I do not want to be up here. I do not want to submit a red card in opposition to one of our greatest allies. She is an ally for all sexual assault survivors. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is that what we're talking about is an horrendous crime. Um, what we know about castration, though, is that it doesn't serve as a deterrent and, in fact, makes things more dangerous for survivors because when you don't have that as a tool to hurt survivors, you use objects, you use things that are more deadly. Um, and I, I have represented survivors. I, I have seen horrific things. Um, but in terms of, of, of being there for survivors, you know, we have to do things that actually work to protect them or to protect potential victims. This isn't one of those things, but we do have chemical castration. There has been some studies to show that that does help with certain types of recidivism, but it's very limited. So I'm just fearful um, based on the studies that this would make things more dangerous because when you don't have that, what do you resort to? then with objects and and things that actually make it more deadly for or you know potential victims and so this isn't this isn't i mean we're a victim service provider we represent sexual assault survivors we absolutely have seen heard and experienced the most horrendous acts of violence with children with adults with teens we've seen it all um but i do know i've heard about the fiscal note and you know, Senator Ward, you make a great point about resource for survivors. Today's Survivor Advocacy Day. We have some of our, our counselors who are here today to celebrate. We barely ever let them out of the office because we have backlogs, wait lists for those seeking services. So I know exactly where you can put those resources, put them into the sexual assault centers who serve survivors of sexual assault for free. We are on tremendous wait lists right now and we can't, we can't get to all of the survivors because they need services. And so I, I appreciate um, everything Senator Barrow and Senator Mizell have done. They are advocates for survivors and, and seek to protect them. And I do believe there there are survivors you talk to that there's a natural desire in terms of, of certain levels of, of, you know, just being upset and angry and wanting to do this. Um, but it doesn't practically serve as like any kind of deterrent for future future crime so i'm happy to answer any questions it's very hard to be uh to put a red card in for senator Barrow. i don't want to be up here doing so we appreciate your comments and for you coming forward today um there are no questions the board is clear thank you thank you senator barrow what Unless you want to say anything else, we'll go ahead and, and take up your motion to voluntarily defer this bill. I, I, I am, um, and, and this is one of the reasons why I am going to uh, do the study. Um, and I appreciate uh, Ms. LaMondre because we have definitely been on, we definitely agreed on more things than we disagree on. Uh, but I do disagree. I, I don't know if I agree with the fact that it's not a deterrent. I do know that uh, sex is a power thing. Um, but I, I don't know if it, if it truly would not serve as a deterrent. I don't know if people um, will use objects. This is one of the things I think I read in one of the emails. Um, and so we would take the time to take a look at that and, and look at if there are any, if, there, if there's data that can actually substantiate that. Um, but at the end of the day, make no, no bones about it, no doubt about it. I am a defender of children, just like I know many of you are enjoying me. So thank you, and I appreciate that. Thank and you, I Senator. Thank you for your time. And I appreciate your thoughtful approach on such a serious issue. And uh, we will uh, voluntarily defer that bill, and we will um, request that a study resolution be uh, yes, sir. be done on that issue.